And we're back for round three, the Oregon State Championship. Uh, on your left, we have Dylan Mitchell, who is a uh, local player from, I believe he's actually from Salem, Oregon, while holding the event, but I could be wrong on that. Um, he's been around for a few years. Uh, recently aged up to Masters Division, maybe last year, this year, not quite sure, but he's, I, I believe he's trophied a few events and seniors um, over the years. But this may be his first have been as a master, his first year as a master. And on the right we have Emilio Orozio, who I actually don't, haven't heard of before this event. Um, I'm not sure if he's from here. He's certainly not from Washington. Um, but, regardless, both players are 2-0. Looking to move to 3-0, looks like. The Plasma Mirror match. Um, I know Dylan was playing the Lugia, uh, the Lugia deck before the event, so I figured that was what he would be on for tonight. Not sure what kind of Plasma Emilio is playing. Um, there's been a couple of variants between like the Fairies Plasma and TDK type decks with Thunders and Kyrim and Deoxys and the uh, Lugia Snorlax decks that you see on Dylan's side. So Deoxys start doesn't really tell you much there. Um, just to give you some updates on some other players in the tournament, Tyler Nomura is 0-0 and 2. Gonna have to battle back and win the next five rounds straight to get a uh, to have a chance of making it in the top eight. Uh, James Good, I believe, is 0-1-1. Uh, uh, 2013 World Semifinalist James Good. Uh, 2013 Washington State Champion Matt Oslakovic is 1-0-1. And we see a Plasma Energy on the Lugia. Emilio's turn drops a Lugia, attaches a Prism, Collars Machines onto the Deoxys. I'm not really certain how this uh, match, especially if it's a mirror match, really plays out. Um, I haven't had much experience with the Plasma decks, but uh, Emilio, uh, Shadow Triads, <clears throat> the Collars Machine back attaching to his Lugia. Dylan's hand. So he does 30, ships the turn to Dylan. Dylan's draw for the turn is a plasma energy. <clears throat> gets out, or sorry, a plasma ball, excuse me. He gets out of Thunderous. And plays an end, playing a league promo end. Apologies for the glare on the. Um, on the discard piles there, hopefully it's not too bad. Might have to dim those lights a little bit later. <clears throat> As always, uh, On the Bubble is brought to you by Top Pet Central. Check out topcutcentral.com and purchase a On the Bubble and Top Pet Central partnership playmat as you see being played right now. Also, uh, these states events are brought to you by pokevault.com. Go to pokevault.com and type in the promo code OTP Pokemon for 10% off your order. We see an attachment on the Lilugia. And Dylan just ships the turn back to Emilio. Can't see Emilio's hand pretty much at all because of the way he's playing it, but he does play the end. <clears throat> uh, I don't know how states have been going around the country, but Oregon State is pretty small. They um, have 93 players down from. I believe 130 something or 140 something at our regionals, which was even Denver, so um, kind of a disappointing turnout. But it might just be the uh, the way these events will be will turn out now with the entry fees and increased championship point structure and all that. Increase, excuse me. And Ultra Ball is gonna this card of Plasma City and one other card. Looks like I'm considering a rainbow energy in the discard pile. Um, just for a little metagame breakdown for all of you, I did a little bit of scouting and talking throughout the uh, lunch break, and I think the metagame is mostly Rain Dance decks, that is Blastoise and Embor, and um, Dark Rite Evil Tall. There's a little bit of Plasma, there's a little bit of the um, the Plasma Fairies deck that Xavier Chua won Singapore States with, but for the most part, as far as I can tell at the top tables, it's mostly Rain Dance and Evil Tall. So about what I expected, but maybe more of a uh, maybe more of a condensed meta game than I'm used to in Oregon. We see Dylan 
considering which energy to drop on the Lugia, it looks like, or where to drop the energy in general. Looks like he's can okay, so he's considering a, so he plays a Skyla, thing with League promo Skylas as well. Gets an Ultra Ball. I didn't catch what else was in his hand. A Muscle Band. Just gonna go ahead and Ultra Ball away. A Switch and an N. A Juniper. Switch and a Juniper. And I'd imagine he get, yeah, so he gets a third Deoxys. Uh, let me know if the audio is working in the chat. I just saw that, but I believe the audio is up to speed. Hopefully you're going to get some guest commentary and some interviews as the, as the day goes on. As a reminder, we, we do have six rounds. Um, or sorry, we do have seven rounds and a top eight all being done today. <clears throat> and there's a huge three cry swing. Uh, Lugia, Plasma Gale for the KO. And Emilio promotes his Lugia, attaches a muscle band, and then <clears throat> colors his for six. So, Emilio's. Okay, good to hear the audio is fine, thank you. Emilio is can't get a look at what's in his hand. He needs, I mean, to, in order to attack with Lugia this turn, he needs double colorless energy and a colorless machine. In order to do anything more substantial, he needs several Deoxys, and he doesn't get it. Just attaches the prism and passes. <clears throat> Dylan looks like he's going to go on the thunderous plan, discarding the DC off the Lugia, muscle banding up the thunderous, and. I believe the tool scrapper, maybe a muscle band in his hand, as well as a plasma energy. So it, if he can bring back the DZE, uh, he is going to get the knockout for what might be game next uh, yeah, on his next turn with the plasma energy in his hand and the tool scrapper. Yeah, confirm tool scrapper and plasma energy. There's a juniper by Emilio. Discarding it looks like two other junipers as well, but desperate times and all that. And. <clears throat> Emilio can retreat to the Thunderous, but that Thunderous will just get knocked out with the Lugia. He doesn't, of course, he doesn't know that the that Dylan has the Plasma Energy in his hand, so that's a little, that's a legitimate concern. He also knows that Dylan only has two cards in his hand, so um, I can see him maybe deciding. I mean, if he doesn't have anything else, he needs to he needs to promote Thunderous and just attack and get something going. Looks like he has a scramble switch he's considering playing. <clears throat> Which he does. And there's a max potion. And you can see Dylan's Dylan just kinda shuffling his cards, waiting to be able to slam that plasma energy down. But first, the Caller's Machine will resolve in failing, actually. <clears throat> so I think he has two prize then, I think. I think we've only seen him play two so far, but I could be mistaken. Dylan taking a look for himself. Yeah, yeah, he has one in the discard pile and one on the active Thunderous, so... He does have two in his prize cards. He could also have some number in his hand, of course. And looks like he's gonna go ahead and... Catch the plasma energy. Dylan plays the plasma retreats, and that is the concession. Amelia showing his prizes, revealing a Lugia, a Thunderous, a Deoxys, uh, two plasma energy, and a Colorous machine. So interesting game one. I mean, <clears throat> shows the power of Lugia. Um, oh, Lugia just had to attack twice for the game. Um, I personally have never been too huge of a fan of the Lugia decks. They're obviously very good, and I like Lugia as a card. It's, it's very, very powerful, and it provides an interest in game states, but um, for this format, as I said before, I've been, I'm just been a big fan of uh, the Evil Tall decks, and <clears throat> haven't really considered Plasma much. I do like the uh, Xavier Chua Plasma Fairies deck. Even even Xavier's actually isn't that so much Plasma Fairies. It's more like big basics fairies, but I do like the um, Plasma Fairies list that are running around that utilize Aromatis and Rainbow Energies. Um, those are those are pretty neat, but other than that, I 
It's not really the type of deck that I would like to play. <clears throat> Players getting shuffled up for game two. As I said before, I'm gonna try and get some guest commentary um, on with me. Maybe some interviews and stuff. More, more between rounds content as the uh, as the tournament goes on. Everybody's just still in the <clears throat> still kind of tired and just got back from lunch and all that. And That would definitely change in the future. David Cohen, actually, 2011 world champion David Cohen is 0 and 2, and has said that if he um, has said that he will join us for some commentary if he is dead in the tournament, which I believe dead will be 0 and 3. I don't even know if you can if you'll be live for any prizes at 0 and 3. So, I'm not gonna root against the kid, but it would be nice to have his uh, opinions on commentary. And. Looks like players getting set up. Laying out their prizes. And Mewtwo versus Deoxys. So we have a, a Mewtwo on Amelia's side of the board. He dropped a Genesect, attaches a Prism Energy to it, and ships the turn back with no other plays. Dylan is going to go ahead and drop a Genesect, a Lugia, a DCE, a Bike, and then just Juniper away a Plasma Energy, and I believe a Rainbow or a Prism? One other card. There's a Thunderous, there's a Deoxys, there's a Frozen City, there's a Callers Machine. And. Assuming that Dylan places this on the Lugia as he does, he is going to uh, threaten a turn to Lugia. So, and with no, with no plays by Emilio other than that, uh, Genesex Prism could definitely spell some trouble for him. I didn't quite see what's in his hand. He kind of holds his hand close to the chest, um, but I'm assuming he doesn't have a supporter. He could he could have an end that he just didn't want to play early, or he could have a call race that he didn't want to play for one card. So. But if he kind of stumbles here, doesn't have a supporter, doesn't really have many attackers going, uh, Dalen could just take over the game in this, in similar fashion as he did last game. <clears throat> There's a DCE on Lugia on Emilio's side of the board. <clears throat> And there's a Caller's Machine as well. Emilio appears to be playing with all higher surety cards, save for that Mewtwo EX, but I suppose you can't win them all. Um, as I said before, we are going to be giving you updates on other state championships. Uh, I do know that our own Mike Newman is now 2-1 and one at the Indiana State Championship, um, but I haven't heard much other than that. We do have Harrison Levin at the Florida State Championship, and he will be uh, posting on our Facebook page, as will Mike, with some updates about the tournament. Probably mostly the top eight and uh, the top eight decks, and we'll kind of follow the results from there. So be sure to give us a like on facebook.com slash OTB Pokemon. Dylan's turn, Skylos, and he has the um, Collars Machine for the Plasma. He's going to touch it to Lugia, and I assume he has um, a way to switch Deoxys out of the discard, or out of the active spot. I could, he could also, so he's going to, okay, so he's at Ultra Balls, a Prism, and one other card away. Didn't quite see what it was. Now with three Deoxys of four on the bench, uh, in play, rather. There's the Muscle Band on the Lugia, there's a DCE on the Deoxys, retreat. And there is the knockout for three prizes. And Dylan has once again put himself in a position where he just needs one energy of any type to attack with Lugia and win the game. Emilio still has outs. Um, 
he can still, I mean, he can attack with his own Lugia, he, which um, can knock out the Lugia if he gets enough stuff, but he looks he looks pretty unhappy. His body language is not, uh, not really telling of a player who's very happy with the position they're in. But an end could change things around, you know. Dylan, <coughs> uh, Emilio is getting six cards, Dylan's three off his end, so if he can um, get a combination of cards, he can at least, maybe even if he can't attack with Lugia, because Lugia would take uh, uh, all of the Deoxyses, um, we'll take three Deoxyses, as well as a Muscle Band. He can still kind of get somewhere where he doesn't immediately lose the game. We do see a Juniper in Dylan's hand, though, which is, and a Caller's Machine, which is not um, exactly what I'm sure Emilio wanted to hear. Looks as if I'm finishing some shuffling and then playing the juniper. Oh, sorry, that was a bicycle, not a juniper. Touching a muscle band to the thunder is that another bicycle? Double bicycle. Going in with the Thunderous. <clears throat> Just got word that 2013 Washington State Champion Matt Oslakovic has lost his last round and is ill. He's in the, he had to leave the table to uh, go to the bathroom, so that's not a great start to this tournament, but crazier things have happened. Maybe he can maybe he can pull it back. I've certainly seen certainly seen sick players uh, come back and win tournaments. In fact, in the 2011 regional championship here in Oregon, myself and David uh, I was playing against David Cohen in the deciding round who would make top 16 and who would not, and he got a massive nosebleed all over all of the cards and his whole play mat and his whole side of the board, and it was disgusting. And he ended up losing that match, uh, probably due to the nosebleed. And uh, but he did come back, and I believe he top forward that tournament. Maybe lost in the finals. Can't quite remember, but he was not feeling great that day either. There's a tool scrapper hitting both of those muscle bands on Dylan's side of the board. Ultra Ball discarding a DCE and a Switch. Um, it looks like Carolina Mora's match is done. Don't have the result of that, but it looks like he's finished playing. Emilio considering his options off this Ultra Ball. Looks like he's considering taking a Snorlax. Gonna take a look at Dylan's discard pile. The problem that Dylan put himself in for now is that he um, needs one more Deoxys on the bench to uh, knock out a 180 HP Pokemon with Lugia. But that uh, Thunderous is a, is a huge target. As is this other Thunderous that Amelia will be playing. Um, 
and there is a switch. I, I believe I saw a prism in his hand as well, so I assume that's going right onto the thunderous. And then a Raiden Knuckle returning to Plasma Energy. So we do have a game here. Um, Dylan's hand contains at least one copy of Professor Juniper. I can't really see what else, but and there it goes. And couldn't quite see what he drew, but based on his body language, I would say it's not the best. I apologize, Tyler Ninamora's match was not done. He was simply using the bathroom. But hopefully I'll be able to update you on that when it finishes. <clears throat> Dylan taking a look at Amelia's discard pile, and... So... What Dylan can do here, I don't know the contents... <clears throat> of his deck. But what he can do is... Um... He, so he chose what he chose to do. Um, he's waiting like onto the Genesect. What he could, um, another option, another line that he has is to Raiden Knuckle onto the Lugia again. Let the active Lugia knock out the Thunderous and then um, play the fourth Deoxys on the bench. I don't think Amelia would have taken that bait, but it's possible. Emilio attaches to his Genesect <clears throat> with the Plasma Energy. You're going to Plasma kill it up and Looks like he's going to. Oh, sorry, he's going to uh, red signal it up. Now it looks like he's going to plasma gale. Three prizes. <clears throat> Band on the thunderous. The fourth Deoxys he's holding. And it looks. I, <clears throat> Looks like maybe Emilio was conceding, but now he's not. Uh, so Dylan knocks out the Lugia with the Raiden Knuckle boosted by the Deoxys. <clears throat> the um, the uh, mid to late game handshake and then no concession is always a always a spooky occurrence, but. Looks like we've still got somewhat of a game to play. And a Juniper from Emilio. Finds double the Oxus. Max potions that Lugia at the start. Second Prism onto the Genesect. And it <clears throat> appears he will get a knockout on the um, active Thunderous. So I guess what it comes down to now so he's going to put the 20 damage on that Genesect. And oh, Dylan does have the plasma energy. Okay, I wasn't <clears throat> wasn't quite sure if Dylan had the plasma energy. Dylan Mitchell advances to three and zero. Red signals up the damage thunderous and there's 100 to it knocks it out takes the last couple of prizes so dylan mitchell advances 3-0 emilio rosio drops a 2-1 still very live for the top eight of the tournament um, i'm going to do some more math as the tournament progresses but i believe the 15 points is a maybe and 17 is a lock 16 is somewhere in the middle as well so um we'll update you on that we'll try and get some in between rounds action this round i know this round was a little short uh, so stay tuned for that. Gonna go see what people are playing. Maybe get a little interview or some chat interaction, etc. But thank you for watching.